in, in preparing for this, I've kind of cast a wide net and, and tried to find some other resources that are out there just to get a sense of how broadly this problem is being recognized. And there's actually, there's a lot going on. Oh, yeah. I noticed that um, Richard Dreyfuss, the actor, has yes. Uh, yes. weighed in on this with, he set something up called the Dreyfus Initiative, yes. which is a curricular development program. I looked at that website. Right. And then right. um, the judicial system in Maine, a coalition of the federal and state judges, they're organized as the Maine Federal State Judicial Council, has started a program of video interviews of judges talking about their life and work, basically. And it's, it's really engaging. They had one judge, a state judge, and I, I can't think of his name, who talked about uh, being a troublemaker in high school and dropping out of college and taking a long time to get his act together and eventually, obviously, uh, be, becoming a judge. But the point was to, to make the judiciary not seem something remote, you yes. know, people were born with their robes on or something, but to right. give citizens <laughs> the sense that these are real people doing a job for the public who yeah. are, you know, more or less approachable right. and, right. and can be sort of understood on a, on a human level. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder, That's well, good. just looking at the Supreme Court, for instance, that we seem to be in an era when a number of justices, uh, current as well as retired are out and about and, and making the court maybe a little more accessible. And, and you've both been around long enough to, to see that as a trend. This wasn't something that was so true when, when both of you became judges. And I'd just be interested in your reflection on whether there's anything that the Supreme Court itself, either institutionally or as individual justices, can, can do to address this. Well, it was interesting because um, I'm not in Washington, D.C. all the time anymore, just now and then. And I recently was there, and I sat in the courtroom to watch an oral argument. And I sat there and looked up at the bench, nine positions. And it was absolutely incredible. On the far right was a woman. Boom, boom, boom. Near the middle was a woman. On the far left was a woman. Three of them. Now think of it. It was incredible. And that took, you know, it took 191 years to get the first. And we're moving a little more rapidly now. I was pretty impressed. Well, heck, look at this group here. I'm here for diversity. <laughs> uh... <laughs> That's good. <laughs> So things are happening. So, so, so to extract from, from, or extrapolate from, from what you said, so in other words, the, the court being able to sort of model. Well, I just think that the image that Americans overall have of the court has to change a little bit when they look up there and see what I saw. I thought that was a pretty big change. Of course, not too many people get the chance to actually See no, but the they see in pictures, right, you know, right, right. everybody sees I mean, here, pictures of the court. Here we so. are on, on, on C-SPAN, and, you know, C-SPAN has kind of a dog right. in, that, in that fight of, right. Uh, right. of wanting to bring the court into the living rooms of America. A fight which I hope C-SPAN loses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't, won't go off on that. <laughs> on that. But, um, 